Donna, we are back again, but this time, instead of looking around the three axle dump trailer with your dad, we are hooking on to, what are we hooking into? That's your job to tell us. So Gareth, first of all, thanks very much for coming down. Appreciate taking the time. It's been a bit of a slow burner, this project, I think we'll both agree, <laughs> but we're finally here. This is her new state of the art. Now we've had the project or the, the model released a couple of years, but we built this custom built tiller for yourselves. Pretty much there's everything on it. Um, we have got our EU, it's her basic EU44 low profile, lightweight step frame. So it has, That's um, a lot of, lot of words there. Yeah. But she's essentially, in my common day language, a nice machinery carrier. A nice machinery carrier. <laughs> it's not too heavy. That is the whole profile about it now. I think COVID gave everybody an eye opener, even in terms of fuel shortages, things like that there. I think it's become a massive burning issue. A lot of people, the environment, green, go green, all this. Um, and it's something we totally focused on on this trailer, is how we can help reduce our carbon footprint and how our products can help reduce the carbon footprint. Trailer is, should be weighing in around about 8.5 tonnes, which is one of the lightest trailers in the market. Still strong to do anything you need. Plenty of strength in it. The big features again, tie points, there's 56 pairs of tie points, 56 tie points in total in the trailer. There's pretty much nothing you can't strap that trailer. Something we're very proud of, we, we use as many high quality brands as we can. We've, of course, we've used our, of course, our BPW axles, Goodyear tires, and it's something obviously you were quite keen on that we needed the spare part back up, that if you were down the road, something went wrong, we're sitting and you make a phone call and That's it's easy it. fixed. And one of the profiles of, of Grassmen and lorries and trailers is, you know, they're not tramping the road every single day and I know our mechanic loves his BPW drum. All the par spare parts sitting in his workshop. He always preaches to me, BPW drum, he likes that because they are sitting about a wee bit and you want to be able to go in, start and off you go. I know you're, you're, you're sort of, you were laughing there about the tie points, but we just find we're not moving set stuff, and I know from over the years, you moving bits and pieces of machinery, you know, you could have cars on it, vans on it, you could have a couple of tractors on it, right up to a forager on it or whatever, and when you start to move all this different stuff, Donna, you cannot have enough of tie points. I don't care who you are, you can't have enough, so. Never. But you were saying, people have been looking and they've been going, yep, we like plenty of tie points. That's it, that's it, it's something we brought nearly Standard, obviously, to our, we started the concept nearly two and a half, three years ago. Yeah. But we've evolved the product that you can see around us, that we've brought a lot of it as now nearly standard in the features as well. That's actually through part of your own input as well. Um, and it's definitely something that's benefited our sales and benefited the product. The product that we're actually going to be given something that's safe to be using on the road for the end user, which is obviously part and parcel and something that we pride ourselves in to produce. One of the things we wanted, and this is another project that used it along for us on this was getting up onto the neck of our other trailer was virtually was, was quite a hard job when you were working with uh, say cars or whatever and you've given us a completely hydraulic I don't know what you define this as. Well, we refer it as a, as a lift and deck trailer as you pointed out low profile cars access machines very much low profile no ground clearance, fort lifts it's all very very essential to that part and parcel machinery moving build type of trailer so the big unique thing about this one here is obviously it now lifts safely, hydraulically. Um, it allows us to lift almost 2.5 metres of the deck compared to standard, I would say, the neck ramps and a standard trailer in about a metre. Understand, yeah. So it yeah. totally reduces the angle um, and it's much, much easier to use. And she lifts up and locks in? Yep. And remote control? Remote control, yep. Very much custom to yourself. A lot of people just go with standard spools, but again, to be fair to you, Garth, nothing's, nothing's ever a problem and very much you do like things to be simple for everybody to use which is which again safety back in mind there's no fingers near it everybody can stand back and it's very well, much the concept is and some of the work that we're doing it's not your seasoned veteran experienced driver necessarily so you no. want everything that no. you know that if you can make it that little bit easier yeah. that's what it's all about and it maybe help you know helps people they're not having to wrestle or worry so much about hydraulic pipes or things like that. The other thing to point out that I really like, you haven't done this many times before, you said, but the way you were stowing the ramps away over here, they're, they're for want of a better word, the wrong way around <laughs> for, for being stored as they go up the road, you know, they're the way you have them tucked in there. But yeah. that was a wee bit of a challenge as well. 
because I remember you telling me you had to work your way around strength, making sure you did it all strong enough. Strength was a, definitely a concern at the time. Um, again, lucky enough, everything down here is all done with SolidWorks and every tiller. Everything's 3D modelled, stress tests were performed, and basically we, we simplified, added a few extra brackets, bits and pieces. A bit of bespoke steel used as well, a bit of strength, dome X, etc., and the main beams to keep the weight down again. Was, again, a high focus of what the project involved. But the big thing we found from other drivers and talking to yourself again, if chains are sitting, the ramps are sitting out in view without being fixed in the trailer, they're a, they're a, they're a ticket to be stole. So they are very much people I've heard spare parts ringing in, they've lost such and such, they've lost their chains, their tensioners. So it meant you could hide the ramps basically in flush when your machine is loaded or unloaded that they're not sitting obvious for people to, to be walking past and something just to lift and walk away with. Ah, exactly, and outriggers as well. Yeah, outriggers, and again, bespoke to yourself for the nature of your work. Again, you've talked about forage harvesters, big balers and things like that there, where a lot of the weight is right out and outside the trailer. We obviously went with the, uh, the steel outrigger boards. Yes. Um, a lot stronger, a lot safer. Um, again, checker plate, a bit more grip on them, and again, to really, really hammer at home, galvanised, nothing's going to go wrong with them. They're sitting there now that, you know, they're not something you don't use every day of the week, but I think <laughs> um, they're sitting there and they're never going to wear away. Again, the wood, if you bring them out, sometimes the wood's rotten and they're breaking when you're breaking down the thing. That's the thing, the, the tie points that they swing around, it's trying to protect their chains. We don't want to be going out and, you know, scoping all the, the paint off. Scania grey is our thing. It's a, to many people, grey is a boring colour, but I think the combination of the alloys, Scania grey, we keep the trucks, chassis Scania grey, I think it just works. And oh, an image absolutely. is important. <laughs> absolutely. Obviously then for the extra protection, it's just wax oil in below. Any parts and additional parts we could galvanise, we did, because the less, the more parts are moving on her, they're going to wear eventually. So that was something you did and lighten us about, was we wanted as much longevity in the trailer, the lightweight yep. profile of the trailer, the slim profile, that how we could simplify and leave it bolt on and add on as, well, as, as things need to. And if you're not needing your rigger boards and you know you're going away and you don't need them, that gives you an awful lot more storage area. So two metre toolboxes. Yes. Um, obviously we have our storage trees, which can be used as additional storage trays. And then obviously you have your storage tray for the ramp, which can be, again, took out, or there's extra room in around it, where again, a lot of chains and stuff, tensioners will sit down in ratchet straps. Beauty of the toolboxes, um, fully sealed, so you can obviously put in even things like paperwork, stuff like that there, documents, quite essential to, again, your nature of business, Gareth, that, you know, it's not getting soaked and it's not getting damaged throughout the, through the transportation. And we went for rear steer. Rear steer, to be fair, it's nearly essential now. Back to what we're saying, lower carbon footprint, easier on tyres, easier on fuel, ease of use um, for yourself, for Ruth, whoever wants to drive the tiller, safer falling around the roads, easier around roundabouts. It's a no-brainer sort of moving forward while it's still, the uh, fixed axle is still quite a popular tiller. Rear steer and people buying a custom tiller for themselves, 90% of them are all rear steer now. Yeah. Have you any issue, you know, uh, throwing a 20 ton machine up on there? Not a problem, no, not, not an issue at all. Straight away, the tiller was probably tested, stress tested. Again, all the right running gear, the right axles, you have the right wheels, two, four, five, seventies, low profile again. You're not, you're, it's not going to be an issue. One of the things when we were coming through the process of this trailer, I wasn't sure what to do with was whether to go with a painted rim, whether to look at alloy. Um, we, we initially threw on the Goodyear tyres with, with a steel rim because I was thinking we'd maybe go paint it because that was part of the style. And then when I had the lorry down doing the changeover of tyres with Midland tyres, and I was just telling them about projects that was ongoing. They, they were very, very, very keen <laughs> to try and promote the uh, alloy. And um, sort of together we all came to an agreement on it. And um, I think we made the right choice when you see it sitting there. Oh, it's brilliant, I think. It's one of the best looking trailers we've produced in a long time. I think, again, we went twin rims. Um, we had to do a wee bit of work to get them fitted, but we've got there in the end, and I think when you look at it now and you stand back, it's, it's, it's well worth it. I know, I, th I think so, and as I said, it just took a wee bit of time, but it was good, and, and, and it was good. That was, that, that was one of the more enjoyable experiences, seeing that all happen and, and, and fair play. Would you fit alloy? I know you get lots of alloys, but would you fit them in mini trailers? Don't we it? would fit them probably it's getting more and more popular, like everyone else. We'd probably fit them about 25%. It's obviously all commercial based tillers, but it's very much depending on what the, uh, the customer wants. Sometimes when you're working towards a dealer network, 
dealers generally want to try it, just buy it, unless a customer buys it off them and specifies an alloy wheel. We find more so, again, um, if we're stuck for weight, going for towards 44 tonne operation, um, things like our box fans, etc., we find that the alloy wheel has become very, very popular, where, again, the, the large fleets of 800 trailers, they're trying to reduce their fuel costs. That's right. Which, and then, penny the savings on one trailer over such a large fleet, it's massive. Obviously, we fired on there. I call it a fairly standard, I call it a tractor bar. I don't know what the technical name is at the front. Tractor headboard, yeah. Tractor yeah. headboard, I'm yeah. right. Yeah. Wheel, wheel headboard, yeah. And because of the nice hydraulic deck, we thought that would actually sit well to have a winch on it for that day that there's a problem and we need to pull Craig's bore up on. <laughs> 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 we've, got a, we've got a winch to do so. But look, this is only a small part of your business. And Mac Trailers is the commercial side of Macaulay trailers, yep. which is an agriculture, the massive part of what you do. And that ultimately that's how, you know, we will have known of you guys probably more so through your agricultural brand, but certainly the commercial side has to be growing and growing. I mean, when we've been around here, there's been box vans. I've seen everything go through here lately, but is agriculture still where it's at? Or tell us a bit about that side of your business. We're very fortunate. Um it's a massive part of our business, and thankfully, it got us the foothold to even start building our commercial side. Commercial side has been running now 25, 30 years, but Macaulay as a whole is running nearly 65, coming 70 years now. Obviously, my father's now owned the business coming 38, um, but he founded the business and pushed the business through dump trailers, low loaders, and a massive, massive thing in the UK and Ireland market. And it is, yes, primarily where our name, his name is known from. More so, Dump to there's no loaders, we're obviously lucky enough now. We've expanded throughout the years and we've been lucky to have a second site. Um, a lot of the low loaders and stuff go through the Balamina site, which again is both a mixture of agri and commercial, but our low loader, our agri low loader is generally quite a standard product as we would call it to ourselves. Um, when it might not look that to the customer sometimes, and they are very much tailored to each customer. Whenever we're building a lot of these products for like yourself and our customer base in Norway and Sweden, um, where a commercial tiller has a lot more high end beneficial features on it. Yeah. We find we can actually, that standard repeat low loader, two axle, three axle low loader, it can be built very, very simply in a, in a, in a, a workspace offsite. We do a lot, a lot of our agri flat beds. Um, you, can, you can see them around. With, they're still very much UK and Ireland based, but lucky enough, we find around the world, we're still exporting out of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, massive market in Scandinavia, where we have a lot of good customers who've been very, very loyal to ourselves over the past 20 years that keep coming back for more and, and we're not going to turn them away. I see a lot of, you see a lot of, I mean, a lot of lorry men watching this, agri men watching this, you see an awful lot of Mack trailer, three axle. Is it drawbar trailer, the right? Drawbar, yeah. You see Center an awful axle. lot of that. You see an awful lot of those, some very nice. Yeah. The, the hay and straw men seem to love them. Before. What's your favorite product? Everyone has That's a favourite. It's a good question. I'd say yours, Gareth. No, but I mean that that EU thirty, that EU forty four. Sorry, that trailer. I would say a step frame low loader. Yeah, we do we do a lot of trombones as well. Um, but again, we we've, we've made a real good product here that has lasted us a long time. We don't have a lot of problems with it. Um, problems happen, but we're happy to deal with them as they come along and how we engineer them out. And yes, very much so. The three axle low loader, um, it's become our bread and butter. We can see, I can see that in you, but when, but when we were chatting to your dad about the, the, the big three axle dump trailer, we could see there was a spark in his eye for the ag stuff now. That's where the business was founded. And that's, and that's maybe why his heart, that's his important heart's there. To, to remember that. Because when you that know, man starts talking about agri stuff and trying different things, he'd be hard to, he'd be hard to hold back. <laughs> that's his passion, to be fair. He's done it nearly 40 years. And that's, that's probably something that, you know, he used to come in, we come in every Saturday and it's something very important to him that, you know, that continues to develop. But we stand still, you know, people will catch up on us and we're, we're left behind. So we're always looking at how we can change, improve and innovate. It's a big, big feature and something we're very, very good at in this company. Well, if someone's looking in from around the world that doesn't know much about Macaulay or Mac trailers, if I asked you just to very quickly summarise your product range, We'll start in the ag side and then come into the commercial side. Now I know you have your special section, but what all, what all are you covering there? We cover everything from construction, farming, industries, oil, gas, again transport, 
um, pallet transport, fleet transport, the sector is massive, there's no real limitations. But, on the, but for what I mean kind of there is like on that agri-trailer, what is in your portfolio? Is it just low loaders or is it? Flatbed, dump tillers from two, three axles, um, low loaders, agri flatbeds, we do your turntable, agricultural turntable loaders. What would be the most popular trailer made in this business by volume? Would it be like, is it a 10 ton dumper or 12 ton? Probably it's the agri low loaders or the drawbar low loaders, um, without a doubt. Rigid, I, so, rigid drawbar. So it's, a, so it's an ag product and a commercial product? Yeah. The two of them are very, very similar, to be honest. Yes. They, bo they both cross over, and we're very fortunate that we have streamlined the designs. A lot of the agri men now are pushing towards that commercial build of a tiller that we find a lot of them are requesting what is on the drawbar low loaders for the trucks that they want them now to run for their tractors as well or they want a trailer to do both truck and tractor, which we're lucky enough, we can provide something that will run effectively an air suspension trailer that will hook straight onto the truck, come home that evening, the next morning hook it straight onto the tractor. It'll run 1224, it'll run the EBS, it'll run your left axles, run your rear steers, your air suspension, and whatever you need done on it. Well, what EBS system have you put into this low loader here? So on all our EBS commercial trailers, we're running, uh, we run Wapco EBS, which I think, Anybody in that line of business knows it's the top run the line. It's now, it's now owned by ZF who do all the gearboxes for BMW. Um, they do a lot of gearboxes for Formula 1 cars. Um, John Deere's. John Deere's as well, that's exactly right. Um, JCB's. <laughs> big point of ours, and even a lot of stuff, back to the axles as well. You get parts anywhere. You can go onto the website, you type in your postcode of current location, and they should have somewhere within 30 mile or even less or throughout the world that you're basically make a phone call or Go on their website, click a part that you need. You're not breaking down. You're back in the road. We've got it added. We've got Wabco ABS system onto our, our big tri-axle uh, Sailies trailer, big Smith trailer. I can yeah. say that because you're not making Sailies trailers, so you won't shoot me. But it's actually unbelievable. When, you, when, you, when you're when you used and you have that plugged in to your fast track and you have speed involved, you know, to ha I would safely say to put that out against a standard hydraulic old school trailer, on an old school tractor with hydraulic brakes, that, you know your your big trailer with your you know it is a great job, and I I see more and more and more agri products going down as you said that commercial line like you're doing, and then you're in the position you can do it if the customer wants it easy peasy because you have the yep. experience. Yeah, that's exactly right. But again, the EBS system it's it's like anything else. Time moves on. It's like 20 years ago you were holding a, a 3310 in your hand, and now where you, you know. Unless you're Alec Wilkinson. Now, now they're now they're a collector's <laughs> item. <laughs> and can't can't finish up without saying we we'll have our beefy flap on the back of her. Of course, yep. <laughs> have to have it. I think yep. you've sneaked one or two more of them out there. You're 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 going good with them. See the odd wee reel floating through. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Great job. I, I love to see that. I think it's fantastic. Set the chiller off without a doubt. Um, part of the product. Even it's even for the longevity, the paintwork, stuff behind you, stone chips and stuff coming bouncing off your tires. It cuts risk down. It keeps everything a bit cleaner as well. Your light, better vision through your lights and stuff as well. Plus the look of it, without a doubt, it helps the whole thing. Thank you very much. Looking forward to getting using it. And um, can I just have to just the pain a bit now? But we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to worry about that. But anyway, thank you. No, appreciate it, Gareth. Thank you very much for your time.